another breath of fresh air as we jump into Bifrost versus Eminem. Eminem could take away the opportunity for Bifrost to get into playoffs, or Bifrost could kick Eminem into relegations for good. High stakes, where do we look? Mid lane, Fury versus uh, Chimera? Yeah, I think Fury, right? We have to highlight him because Bifrost, this roster, has kind of been struggling, struggling last time we talked about them. It was Odi showing versatility was, that was the main thing. But Fury, after the game against Eminence, I think he deserves some more praise. He's boosted now. This guy, he has played some great games recently in terms of the one we ones Getting the solo kills, and you can see here, his stats have definitely improved. For fourth, third, and third is very good for a team that at the moment is sitting sixth and haven't even locked the playoff yet. Where Kamara, he has a very good kill participation. Yes, he's a very team oriented player where he doesn't really go for the same you know amount of solo kills and gets as much damage off not only that Kamara is one player that really likes birds apparently he's going for the azir he's going for the swain if he's out of those can we find him on a, some comfortable pick that is not a bird so i mean we have seen him on corky in the past i would like to see this him is on a more bird. okay yeah continue. corky is not but did, did you say bird sorry my mistake <laughs> but we have seen him on corky in the past i, I was just okay. thinking i want uh Chimera are more scaling, right? That's why I immediately okay. thought of that. I want to see more more scaling in general on Eminem. M &M. I feel like they're just drafting too much early game and too much playing through that mid, uh, mid skirmish. They keep drafting full early game and losing skirmishes around mid. And I don't think the identity works for them. I don't think the players, I don't think it, it meshes well. I think they keep messing it up. And for relegations moving forward, I think they need to start learning how to play maybe some early game comps, but with some scaling dabbled in there. Yeah, I, I really agree, right? Because Kamara, he's a very good teammate. He's a good team player. But for me, he's not the guy you want to try and get ahead early on. He's someone who, you know, plays the first lane, bit of lane very so well. So who do you want to get ahead? his team. Ahead. Because for me, I think Kamara needs to be the one who helps unlock his team. You could look, but for example, Mishigu has had some great games, in my opinion. Maybe Soph as well. We know he can be a carry jungler if they, they are in the message. You could maybe try and push towards him. To me, though, it feels very wrong, wrong putting Kamara in the sole carry boot trying to win early fights around him, because for me, it's Kamara who should be helping his team win early fights around other members on the map. Okay, it's time. Who wants to press the button? Should we do it together? Ella! Oh, there you go, he's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Champion select from Eminem versus Bifrost, 3, 12, to 8, and 7. When you get to those nine numbers, when you get the number nine, that's almost when you are secured for playoffs. Standings are really fresh, so let's see if that's enough for Bifrost or Eminem for relegations. Okay. Tell me. Just very quickly before we get into what will be drafted yes. here, it is important to say for all those Nuriki fans out there, if Bifrost win this game, Nuriki will have to beat X7 if they want to make it into play. So if you're sitting there wondering what does this mean for the greater league, it is a very important match for Bifrost locking that player. If you're a Nuriki fan, cheer for Eminem. Yeah, you are cheering for Eminem. That's what you want. Tell me, Aragon. So I think what we're going to see now, and what we're already starting to see is Sh uh, Shikari, I don't know why I said Shikari, but Bifrost are going to be drafting a scaling composition whereas Eminem are going to be drafting early. And what Eminem are getting rid of right now are unmanageable scaling picks, as well as Belveth, so that Bifrost don't throw any curveballs with a Belveth comp, right? What, you, what they're getting rid of is the Zeri and the Senna to get rid of that scaling, whilst, ah, this is exactly what I was looking for. I think Bifrost needed to ban either the Callista or the Draven to get yeah. rid of the early game potential from Eminem to snowball against their scaling comp that will happen. This has to be a volley bear first pick, no? Because Diamond yeah. has been a yeah. beast with volley. If you take away the Belveth, you need to take away the volley and in a different way. Also, volley bear gives soft um, openings to play for early game, which is their win condition every single time. <laughs> Renata. No, this is actually really good because it's no, but you you're leaving the bear. Yeah, true. Uh, unless they think they can answer it with maybe a Lee Sin or Xin Zhao. That's what they've done in the past. But the Renata takeaway is really good because you deny that scaling um, as well as some uh, disgusting kill lanes. But that's exactly what you want to do as Eminem, right? You want to deny that Renata. Also, yesterday, not yesterday, Monday, last game day, Renata completely counters, uh, countered Eminem's comp. Eminem liked to draft go in um, <laughs> compositions with that Amumu, with that Jarvan. But the enemy team had Renata, so the disengage value was huge every single time. So I think denying this Renata is actually a really good move. I am very interested in seeing this move coming. Or well, something Pyrofrost played a lot earlier on this bit and had a lot yeah. of success with. But after his early game got nerfed, I thought they would really drop it because Pyrofrost uh, are the kind of team which likes to have Diamond Frogs roam around early and enable his team. And at the moment, there is no better jungler doing that than the Volibear after the early game nerf to Wukong. So I'm very interested. We know they can play the Wukong. We know they can have success with it. But are they going to have success to the same degree as they had before when Wukong wasn't nerfed? It lowered the clear speed, but still 
Bifrost, I think they're around 80% win rate with the Wukong still. So that, that is, when we talk about percentages, that is a high one. That is a high stake as well, which means Soft can go into yes. the Lilia. That is a yes, that is excitement, and okay. why? So I was actually talking with uh, Sof a little bit about the Lilia, right? Because mm. I had to do some research on Scrooty, and I know Sof, and he thinks there's definitely more room for Lilia in the meta. He also yesterday, uh, not yesterday, I keep saying yesterday, on Monday hey. in the interview, he kept saying, Lilia, he hopes, is back in the meta. Lilia actually is really good into Wukong. Wukong has all these, uh, this really low base magic resist. In general, just counters uh, countered by the Lilia in skirmishes early. And what we're seeing here is the makings of the scaling composition from a Bifrost and the Pantheon Hover. It's my boy, it's Fury. He knows, he knows what's up, he knows what's up. You'll have to pick him eventually, I'm just saying, but okay. We go back to the meta where we're talking about a failures in Jinx. It seems like the normal one. Get it? I'm really happy. Sorry, I just realized it just- You're happy with me. the failures in Jinx? No, I'm happy with m and m because oh. they are finally drafting more scaling. They have the, the fullback of the, uh, the Jinx carry. They haven't done this in so long. Four plus game days. <laughs> They're finally I almost see a tear there dropping. Scaling insurance. No, I just, I want the best for them, right? And I think this is the best. <laughs> Taking away the swine means one of the birds is down. Will they take the, another one with only one stone? Will they take Azir down? And maybe Kameda is forced to play another thing. Corky is still available. Exactly. Even though I'm not excited about that one, because yesterday on Division 2 I was forced to cast Corky with shield bow three times in a row. Mm. So, not okay. We're also seeing that Nar's still open, so we could potentially see a Nar early pick from uh, Kalem, potentially. We did see the GP ban. The GP is actually permanent banned against Kalem. I don't know if you guys have uh, seen the match history and the, uh, the pick ban rates for uh, GP bans into M&M. It's like near 100%. It's really disgusting. This guy's clearly a madman on GP. And now <laughs> they ban out the, the Gwen. Um, really particular, maybe they're looking for a, an Orn blind pick, uh, but Gwen is a historically decent uh, blind pick topside because you don't really go down that much CS in most matchups. You go, you go even or down like 10 CS into ranged matchups. Typically those are the counters, but really peculiarly they do, they do ban Gwen. Maybe Kalem has been spamming Gwen in solo queue. Not too sure. They take the Gwen, let's see what they take on the other side for the mid lane. It's Yorn. for the top, for the Yorn. Like I said, Which yeah. means it's going to be the pick maybe for the top because Shikari is comfortable playing on a losing matchup. He's really good at what he does. And maybe they allow the counter pick for the mid lane, which will be Fury. There we go. They might be taking Ooh. the Sejuani. Big team fight potential. I think it's Gwen. On the other side, if they pick the Adi, I can see Fury going for the Vega. Is this actually locked in? I can't yeah, tell. Yeah, that is locked in. This is locked in. Okay, so this is great, right? This actually, it fell off a little bit in popularity recently. It was really popular into Nar. I think what they're, they're predicting is the Nar pick from Eminem and Sejuani plus Wukong is really good in general combination because of how fast uh, the attack speed lets you stack Sejuani's passive. It's the same with Viego, Sejuani. This was really popular before, but I think it dropped in priority because Viego got nerfed. We've seen Kalem pick Camille into, I believe, uh, Chasey Sejuani, and it didn't go well. Uh, we saw a, a hefty plate disadvantage um, from Camille into Chasey Sejuani and almost a solo kill from Chasey. And uh, Kalem had to actually roam around making some coin flip roams that kind of worked because MC wasn't doing so hard at the time. I don't really like it. It gives you a lane to play for and some AD when, you're, when you, you kind of need it with the AP top and uh, mid and jungle. But until Camille gets that Divine Sunderer spike, she can't really play into Sejuani. That is the Ari, of course. So what will be the response into that? You mentioned that the Kogi was still open, I should him. Obviously, the Silas, we saw it on Monday, right? Very can definitely play that champion, and he will be going uh -huh. back on it again. So trying to repeat the success good. he had just a couple days ago where he really took over the game. Remember, this win is crucial for Bi for Bifrost in that playoff. So when Sol and Ricky fans out there, m, &M you should be happy with the draft, in my opinion. So you think Eminem will take it? No, I think Bifrost will take it. Oh, but they still should be happy. What about you? Are you happy with Eminem's draft? I am draft? so happy with Eminem's draft. They finally drafted more scaling in top and um, bot lane. They've got priority mid lane with a Lilia who can maybe invade uh, jungle camps as well, using that priority uh, because of how it works with Ari into Silas early. I think Eminem have drafted the best possible composition to take the game. I want, I'm just going to vote for Eminem out of hope. You're going to vote for Eminem. Yes. Okay, today he was wrong one time. Let's see if he's wrong yet another time. Bifrost looking for playoffs. Eminem looking to run away from relegations. But I'm looking into the caster's desk and they're looking good. It is initializing trouble. Oh, that was very good. Well, you're looking good. Thank you. So are you. We're just looking fabulous here in general. Good chat. And we're looking at a very important match here as well. To reiterate what the desk was saying, Bifrost win this. They lock playoffs. 
Eminem already in relegations as it stands due boring. to... I know. But of course, Eminem are kind of locked into the situation because of how spring went. And of course, there are championship points specifically when it comes to relegations over the whole year. As we head on to the rift, it means what we're looking for here, if you're a Nariki fan, is an Eminem win. Makes our job of getting into playoffs a lot easier. Everybody else, Bifrost fans in particular, you are big fans of Surprise Surprise Bifrost because this is your <laughs> chance to make sure playoffs are secured. Yeah, and I think it would be honestly a big disappointment if Bifrost did not lock Usually in the so. playoffs. The Masters quarterfinalists, especially coming into summer, we said that jungle support duo that changed out was an upgrade in our eyes. And even though that has been the case, I feel like a lot of other teams have stepped up. Camera. Oh, camera immediately caught out by an E star on free. Abscond and Abduct gets a big HP trap, but they can't quite get anything more. They'll get the ward down early, though, and nice to see some more aggressive and coordinated early plays from Bifrost. This time that work out, because some of the ones, the other ones have been a little off, shall little we say. Sassy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when it comes to Bifrost, I think we heard Highway also mention it on an interview. He was like, We've tried so many different styles mm. since the addition of himself, of course, and Diamond Prox. You're trying to reinvent the style that the team wants to play, right? You keep the core members, which is your two carries mid top, and of course your maxman. But you have changed the two very important moving gears in the early game, which is the mid, uh, sorry, the support and jungle and the synergy in between them. How they want to play the game, how do they see the map, how they move around. And Bifrost have tried so many different play styles where they've tried to play for Shikari, they've tried to play for Fury, they've tried to play for Audi, they've tried to play for early, they've tried to play for late game, they've tried to play for ganks. Sure, yeah, yeah, this, list gangs. <laughs> this list goes on. This list goes on. Literally anything that there is there, Bifrost has tried. The only thing that seems to consistently work is playing for Audi. Audi is probably one of the best marksmen that we have in the NOC. Things like his Aphelios, his Senna are so thin. Lister. Yeah, absolutely. This guy has been a real star, even though Bifrost has been a touch inconsistent. Fury, though, honestly, was, was a bit of the star on the Monday as he just about gets out of range of that charm where he and Diamond absolutely put oh. MS in the dumpster as bot side highway. Maybe looking to try and do something similar with Shredder and Michigan, but it'll just be a trade for now. Nice little engage, though, nonetheless, from the Tom Kench. But honestly, you know, shout out to Fury as well, a player who has been a little inconsistent with those performances and made it work there. He's back on that Silas he felt so comfortable with. Does miss out there on that absconded duck, though, but you would like to see the kind of playmaking there and we'll be able to heal up via that level up as well as Diamond now at level three, looking to maybe find an angle here. Wait, Diamond Prox level three ganking mid? I've never seen this before. And he's got an angle then. It's not going to be spotted. Force a flash early from camera. It's going to go straight down mid jungle from Bifrost. Two weeks in a row securing first blood. Honestly, I'm going to start giving post-its out that will say shame on them. Everyone who dies level three to Diamond Prox mid will get a post-it on their forehead <laughs> from me. What it? So, you know where he was? So Chimera has a post-it right now from me on his forehead that says shame. Obviously, I'm kidding. Diamond Prox is one of probably, if not the most proactive jungler in at that level three mark. If you ask anyone in this league, they'll tell you, if I'm playing mid, I'm most likely going to get ganked by, by Diamond Prox either level two, three, or four. Hell, he even took Belveth into a level three shenanigan mid lane and got a flash on the champion as well. So, yeah. pretty good stuff again. The mid jungle duo was what snowballed their game versus JDXL as well. It was Fury on that Silas that got that very early mm. Everfrost and then snowballed his team to victory. This time it is, of course, Diamond Prox cashing in on the kill. But then again, you see that the fact that Chimera does not have his flash, does not have his teleport, he's two levels away from that Spirit Rush to actually get away from the Wukong if he chooses to gank again. And as you can see, the wave is slow pushing towards Fury. Diamond Prox is mid again. Yes, oh, I'm wonder whether we've got time to talk about this mid lane match a bit more. We will have to wait just for now as Diamond is looking for a wraparound, looking to continue punishing best he can. Has got the angle in, not spotted yet. Camera oh. warding away. The Absconded Duck misses, remember Camera, no flash. It'll just be a chunk and Diamond will walk back to try and potentially clear up some more of his jungle on the second clear. And honestly, he had the time, right? Like the camps were down, this was the opportunity. And uh, does get charmed up as he was clearing out that ward, but gets rid of it. And 
pretty happy with that all things said and done. Honestly, really good stuff by Diamond Prox right there. He saw that Chimera had just come back. No flash, no teleport, as we mentioned. And there was a gigantic wave that Chimera needed to crash over on the Silas. Of course, when you're playing the Ari into the Silas matchup pre-6, you do have the luxury of playing range into Silas, poking him oh, out. Mishiku, they've got a Binding Eclipse to follow up. That will force a cleanse and a flash out of the Jinx. By Frost bot lane is a thing to be feared. I'm playing very well with this duo right now. And how it consistently has been trying to find these abyssal dives to try and pull off potentially maybe a summoner. This time it was very close to a kill. Mystico loses both his summoners. This level six could be a potential target for Diamond Prox to set his sights on. Completely agree, especially considering the top side is the Sejuani. You don't necessarily want to play too much towards them. Don't get me wrong, you've got setup, you'll take it if it's free. I mean, but even Caleb knows right? at this point he's not going to be killing any Sejuani anytime soon. Right. Go for the call. He's just like, you know what? I'm going to maybe play towards my carries. You know, this Silas and this, this, this maybe this flashless Jinx, which looks nice and juicy. We could get our Felios skills. That sounds great. The jungler in me is rubbing my hands at that one. And we'll take this opportunity while we are hovering over Fury and Camera as well to talk about this matchup a little bit more in depth because Fury has been very important to Bifrost and Eviction. Same with Camera, but when they've been losing, the stats have been seriously lackluster for both these players, all things said and done. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like for Chimera, unless he's something like his Lissandra, his Swain, to me, he's lacking a little bit on the impact. And it's the same thing for Fury. We did really see Fury pop off literally two seasons ago when the Akali meta was oh, yeah. out, when the Silas, LeBlanc were out. Now that the durability patch came through and it sort of hindered a little bit the ability of these assassinations, these solo kills, Fury has resorted back to playing a lot of the mages even in the previous uh, season as well. And now we slowly but surely see him fit yet again into that slot of the assassins I'll play in your face with the Salasis with the Akalis. And part of it as well has been just what this player has been asked to do for the team, right? Especially when you have had bot lanes like Odie and Duel from the from spring. Now Odie and Highway, who've been very consistent for this team, at least in lane and stuff early on as well in those victories. It's nice to see uh, Fury back on some of those more proactive plays and doing the best with it. Nice and even in a, in a difficult range matchup to begin with. He's doing really well here. You know what I say? When there's a lane that is too consistent, you always need the int in your team. And not necessarily because <laughs> somebody's gonna go and die and in, it's because if you're playing assassins, it's high risk, high reward. Bit of volatility. Right? So technically, players who play assassins are soft inters, but in a good way. Do you get it? So I, I, I see your point. I, I'm worried about what you're encouraging at the NLC you fans watching. So if you get banned people. because of this play style, blame trouble, not the broadcast, okay? <laughs> we, we, we like, the, the, her views are not our own. There's some like legal disclaimer I'm sure I've got to give out at this point. <laughs> Riot Terms of Service, please adhere to it. Not to sign somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, but gonna... of course, uh, it, it is really funny because playing um, a bunch of assassins and melee, Champions in the mid lane in this meta, you are susceptible to a lot of the ganks, but mm -hmm. also it's very high risk, high reward. You do manage to get the kill, like Fury and uh, Diamond Prox did versus JDXL. That Silas will snowball, and then the liability. Oh, Shredder. Diamond. He's going to have to force the flash his time. Of course, Mishiku's still got no flash. He's doing what he can. He's got nowhere to go. That set from Crescendo goes down. A double for Odie and Highway. Their way or the highway. And you can see which way that one worked out. Fury now hopping forwards onto camera gets a bit of a chunk as Shikari and Diamond trade out in the topside jungle, just winning on every side of the map right now. Herald spawns to boot. That bot lane two versus two, it was all cleanse, flash, diff. The fact that Highway and Odi took the two versus two and Mishiku lost both his summoners meant that Highway's Ignite was still burning on Mishiku. Uh, Odi also had the right guns, but Eminem feel themselves towards the top side of the map. They want to go and contest for the Herald. Caleb does have ultimate. Chimera has ultimate. Renata incoming on level five, whilst Highway is level six. Too late. Too much little. Highway gets that one. His third kill involvement. Fury with more of the Spurry Fresh to go. Trying to get onto Soft. He's now trying to get out. He will get a Lilting Lullaby. Potentially a Shredder respawns. He needs to try and survive, though. Get stunned up. About to go down. One more auto will do it. Diamond Prox put by Frost. Sixth kill on the board. Yep, three out of six so far on the board for Diamond Prox. Everywhere he's been, he has literally taken the kill for himself and he's snowballing the early game for his team. As you can see, again, we've mentioned how a lot of the times Chimera does not make the right decisions. That was one of them right there. Gets caught by the Sensu Arni ultimate and absolutely destroyed. Then Soft tries to flash away, but Fury, still in the way the Spirit Rush from the Ari is able to follow through. Yet another kill going for the mid-jungle duo. And again, we've seen 
a lot of these teams going for the Herald place. Mm. And it's usually one of the two supports that has leached XP off of another lane and has gotten into this Herald fight level 6. Highway was level 6, Shredder was level 5. These Renata ultimates, especially in choke points like this, are so important to have. And let's call it out as well. Um, big move in the fact that Soft was a little late on the recalls and was not there to contest the Herald in time. Didn't have the Lilting Lullaby either. They must have used it elsewhere on the map. So I think Eminem unfortunately just had to give that one up. And it really burns them now. They're losing pretty much most lanes. Two assists now on Shikari as well, who was having a quiet time of it. And we've talked about the mid jungle. We've talked about the bot lane. Bifrost looking much better over these last two games. And I think that's been the story for Bifrost as well. Usually Shikari oh, is Mr. Soft. Consistent. Uh, towards the top of the map, as Diamond Prox is going to contest away the big chicken from Sof. I think Sof uh, smited, smited that one secure, yes. Uh, Shikari has been Mr. Consistent the entire season. Whatever champion you put him on, he's going to be a rock towards the top side of the map, and he's going to perform. Diamond Prox, he's your early game ganker. Talking about early game, we're only 10 minutes in. Fury, Diamond Prox towards the bot side. It's a four-man die. The action doesn't stop by Frost. One playoffs, they want it now. A stolen hostile takeover means this turret ain't no skyscraper in Manhattan. Bought out by Bifrost in moments. They'll summon a Herald as well, and it's Demolition Crew making way for more gold in Bifrost pockets. Ah, I think Bifrost right here knew that their fastest game was versus Singularity, I think. They split 21 minutes something. They're trying to make this even faster. 2-0-2 two, two for the Hyper Carry down the bot lane, the likes of Audi. Five tower platings, first tower. They've gotten the Herald, they've gotten the Dragon. They're gonna swap now their AD carry towards the top side of the map, take possibly even more tower platings to their name. That Aphelios already has Kraken Slayer. Sandra for Diamond Prox. Bifrost are literally choking Eminem with Macro. They really are. I'm looking at Soft here, but he doesn't feel like he's got an opportunity to go in. And that means I've got an opportunity instead to bring up a wonderful little bit of a new hashtag. Hashtag NLC memes. You know it's true. Why do we only have two spots at EU Masters? Behind them, Riot stares aggressively. Stop it. That hurts, man. Go find the meme format from the Twitter. Go give us your best versions. Contact, we'll pick and select a few to throw them out. Contact the Riot Games and please ask them why we also have two seeds whilst uh, Caleb wonders what he has for He's got a Hextech ultimatum, but he gets devoured and it's a delicious three-course meal. Or maybe just one this time around. A snack for Shikari to get his first kill on the board in time. Oh, to find Nishiku! That's a 5-0. and oh. Wukong just forcing Mishiku to flash Diamond. Not the best warrior tricks oh, ever, but still no has. There's no tower. Yeah, he's just waiting to see, is there anywhere to go? Mishiku's like, I must find my way, wait for warrior tricks. There's an infrastructure, there's nowhere to go. He's just gone. You know Goodbye, what? Goodbye, sweet Jinx, we knew thee he's well. He's me of the John Travolta meme where he's like looking around very confused. Yeah. <laughs> Mishiku was like, where's my tower? Where's my teammates? Oh. Where do I go? Where's Monka? Okay, so I've, got, I've, got, I've got a new one of those hashtag NLC memes. It's just like Mishigu trying to farm in Botsai behind him. Here's the Wukong. And now it's 6 to no. Good grief. This is a bit of a statement game from Bifrost, who are looking to make this late season surge towards playoffs. Again, they were our EU Masters representatives, number two. Had a bit of an awkward summer split towards the middle portions, but can still make their way up the standings somewhat here. And this is a great way to start and do it. Absolutely. 7,000 gold difference at 12 minutes in 6, 0, and 0. Ooh. For Diamond Prox, the legend himself, he has oh absolutely boy. taken control of the entirety of the map. He's level 3 gank chimera in the mid lane, gotten himself a kill. He came back to try and punish. He went towards the bottom of the map, gave Audi uh, and Howey the priority to push. Howey then gets summoners down bot lane, and then they 2v2. The entirety of Bifrost has been on point. Oh, Gary Hammer Wall. takes so much damage, has to ult away from the Moonlight Vigil. That might well have spelled death with Shikari around the corner. Another plate falls. The top lane turret's gone as well. That is 12 plates already with 30 seconds to go. A huge amount of gold purely from structure demolition. And I don't know how in the world you allow Asylus to take top lane plates versus a Camille. Eminem seem to be falling apart right here because even though they do have vision towards the top side of the map, they play too scared around the towers. There's not enough coordination. I feel like ever since they pushed Soft outside of his jungle, we haven't necessarily seen these team fights that we see in the early game from Eminem and that creativity from their engages. Although Highway might be a little bit too far forward. Bold. Uh, Everfrost is going to miss. We uh, maybe have had a few criticisms about this player, a young rookie player, of course, who has overstepped a little in the mid games occasionally. For Bifrost, saw that a little bit against XL on Monday, where, of course, things like the Zac were very long range and perhaps not what you used to play again. So, credit and perhaps a little bit of 
Um, benefit the doubt to Highway, but now this mid lane turret in danger. Shikari with the Glacial Prison, and the prison is death. A bailout will not be enough. Soft flashes for a Lilting Lullaby. It's four man, but the turret's gone. Not going to do that much work. And the turnaround is just monstrous. Bifost continue to run them over. Maybe we took the crown off them too early. These team fights look crisp, all right. Oh, Shikari right there, sees the shot, takes the shot, hits Shredder in the face. Three members now for Eminem and Bifrost can actually run to get the second Reef Herald of the game. They've opened up every tier one on the map, and they're looking, they're having the sights on this tier two. So look at Shikari, he pretends he's taking the ward, and then he's like, surprise, charges in, gets Shredder with the ultimate, and it's all too little, too late. If you also look on the map, Diamond Prox prioritized taking down the tower right before the Lilia ultimate hit. So then Bifors are able to turn this around without that extra tower damage falling onto them. Really good stuff. Love seeing this coordination by Bifors because we have a lot of question marks in the early season. Highway said, you know what? We have found the style. That's how we're going to play from now on. And that's exactly what they do. Scaling down bot, scaling mid, early ganks around mid lane to snowball. Fury, she carried the rock on the top side. They have found their recipe for success. Really feels like it. And you know, I feel for Soft in that play as well. He finds a four man lilting lullaby under their tier one turret in another game where it wasn't this vast gold lead. That could have been it. That could have been the turnaround. Unfortunately, it's not, and it means more gold in Bifrost Pocket. The priority continues to be there. They've got two Heralds, two Dragons, and about two steps away from winning the game, it feels like. You know what I love a lot about Bifrost? That ward, that, sorry, bush that Highway is in right now, where she carry all the from, they have made it their life's decision <laughs> to keep it warded at all times. Real estate but speculation. Keep this warded, having Sejuani around, having Silas around, meaning that you can have those long-term engages, means that whoever is mid lane cannot overpush. They can only stick underneath the tower, which means by the time the wave is there, you would have missed some experience, you would have missed some gold, and it's much more difficult for you to try and catch up because you're going to need some help. So even if this Jinx steps underneath the tower, they see her alone, she is diveable at this point. So I really love the fact that Bifrost are keeping vision around that specific boost that Odi just went about. And they keep playing around that one, threatening constantly mid lane dives. They've been doing such a good job of it. They're going to summon the second Herald down towards the bot lane, and Odi has some wonderful weapons to shred through this tower. Camera just doesn't really have an answer to be able to clear out this wave or the Herald it comes through. They might even get an inhibitor turret charge here as well. Certainly going to try and escort it in. Shredder of the wall, though. While this is happening, look at Shikari. He's left the top of the wave. He shoved it in. He's going towards mid lane. Preps the wave. Renata ultimate is going to go in. Yeah, but it's only onto a clone. And Camera takes so much damage. Afterward comes the Moonlight Vigil. Shredder with the Chakrams flying downtown will just about survive. But the attempted turnaround engage is punished willingly and readily by Bifrost. They can do no wrong. Ah, that macro was absolutely beautiful. Shikari shoves in the wave in top lane while the Rift Earl is pushing bot. He pings at He's heading towards that mid lane, gets another two waves pushed in, gets that mid lane tier two as well. Botlin inhibit the tower fell too due to Shelly. That is impeccable macro movement from Pyfrost. And yes, you can say whatever you want, there are 11,000 gold ahead, but the fact that they haven't allowed a single inch for their enemies to come back into the game speaks miles about their development from the start of the split to now. So you will see that obviously Chimera and Sof are looking for that engagement together with Shredder's ultimate. The fact that Renata ultimate misses or gets a huge Moonlight Brutal. Vigil with his sniper, meaning that he can shoot them from super far away. He has a bunch of Chakrams uh, stacked onto him as well. Meanwhile, Sikari pushing mid. They've got almost every single outer turret in the game. Only the top side remains. And guess what? In four minutes and 40 seconds, there is a third dragon coming out. Mountain Soul on things like Wukong, who's already tanking together with yeah. Shawani, but also Tam Kens, but then a Silas who sustains a lot. Eminem are behind. They're going to be even further behind. And don't get me wrong, we asked for a little bit more scaling from Eminem. Aragon was really adamant about it, saying, look, I'm not sure about these early game comps. They've drafted for it, and unfortunately, that's meant that the early game has been pretty heavily punished. Not just pretty heavily, it's been monstrously punished. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen um, well, finally, my screen came back. I had a moment there where we went all black and I'm um, <laughs> cosplaying Eminem Sorry, there man, briefly. That, that happens to my solo queue as well. Don't know why. <laughs> that's because you play Katarina. Ah, um, that's why it was. <laughs> I was wondering. Well, we, we enjoy insulting each other's mains here in the NLC, and for good reason, really, as Kalem forced away from even that bush near the blue. 
is forced out of that. Just no control anywhere on the map. They've got one remaining outer tower that's about to get sieged onto, and I don't know how easy it'll be for Eminem to hold on. Real quickly, tell. before Pfeiffer starts oh, sieging. No chance, no chance. Before. Caleb gets knocked out of the hook shot and knocked into the dirt. Question before the scene five finishes. Chat. Yes. Do you think Bifrost will get the first Oh, game? God, the question's answered! Eminem taken down to about a third HP each as that Inferno Moonlight Vigil burns him all to Christmas Fury. Steals the Ari Spirit Rush. He's looking for a 1v4 in the enemy base. Gets on a Shredder. Finally gets charmed. Goes Golden Survives, but that will allow this inhibitor to turn to get Siege taken down. Shikari was diving forward with an Arctic the Assault, wave. but his hand shook away. Inhibitor turret in mid lane falls, and this has been the story of this mid game. The flow from one objective to another from Bifrost has been silky smooth. Absolutely. They're going to take another inhibitor tower and they're going to go back. TP. So with a race at TP, he's coming back in. Diamond Proxstone might just spot this. Caleb is going in. He's going to try his best, but what can they do to stop it? Diamond might try and turn it around, though. Caleb, hook shot, gets stunned on the wall. Thanks to the passive of Szechuani. Odi is godlike indeed. Over the wall goes Diamond to secure another. A 3v5 oh, from Adrian oh, Eminem. A double already. Make that a one back, but it's just not enough. Mishigu is glue, and Cameron alone is the one remaining. No, Odi ruined the perfect game for Bifrost. How could Eminem he? Eminem have no towers, Eminem have no dragons, Eminem have no neutral objectives, and they had no kills up, to, up until the point where Mystical Flashes take Odi's life. Bifrost will win this game pretty convincingly. Unfortunately, though, it's not going to be the perfect one uh, initialized. The marshmallows freeze in the might of Bifrost this game. A final inhibitor falls. They won't quite look to end it yet. But Nariki fans look on, and there's a sinking feeling in their gut as Bifrost looking to make sure playoffs are going to be theirs today. And again, Caleb, he's a pretty uh, strong Camille right here, level 12, but he gets instantly stopped dead in his tracks. And again, I have to commend Shikari for the way he has been playing the Sejuani. The engages have been spot on. Him covering for his team have been spot on. Oh, do you feel the inter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rage from Trouble Link, I'm sure, is uh, counted by their team as well. A super mega death rocket to spot out the Barons going down, and there's nothing at all Eminem can do about it. Thank you, Mastercard. Thank you, Mastercard. Are okay. we going to go somewhere with that? Or is that just... No, it was just, just thank you. <laughs> just being thankful. Okay. Uh, and by Frost as well. Very thankful for how this game's gone. It's been a bit of a statement from them. We've had so many questions about their consistency, so many questions about how their team co co coordination has been. They're shoving in with three lanes of minions. They're shoving in with Baron. They're shoving in to prove exactly what they are here to do. Okay. Caleb has to back out. Hostile Taker comes through. Camera goes forward, but it's a last gasp. A Spirit Rush into the grave as Diamond Brock throws down another Cyclone. The bailout will buy some time for stop, but he melts. It's like a dream, and they wake up to the cold, cold reality of Bifrost locking playoffs. And after cold sweat, through the split up until that second to last week of the regular season by first finally by the skin of their teeth locking these playoffs beating Eminem and again that was a very decisive game to do it through beating JDXL just on Monday coming back in on Wednesday and giving us this game I wanted to say perfect game but Audi you stopped me right there, dead in my tracks. I think it's huge, the fact that they lose Singularity, then proceed to beat the number one team in the league. And now they're looking so strong. They have found their stride, they found their play style. And all they have to do now is wait and see if anyone can actually crack their perfect code. And that was the question, right? We didn't know whether they were even gonna make playoffs. They've made it now. The question has to become, what form are they coming into it uh, with? Two games back to back now where they've looked incredibly dominant. I guess it's to, for the desk to tell us exactly what they think about that game and Bifrost moving forwards. That could have been it. The perfect game, but Odi had another plan. This allows Bifrost to step into playoffs and also remove away Eminem from the run and put them really close to relegations. This is a tough one to take in. And I know we keep saying, oh, I feel really bad for Eminem. But I mean, Bifrost played this really well. Ever since Diamond Prox did the Lee Sin Jungle Clear Challenge, this team has changed. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I mean, yeah, it is really impressive. And they're sticking to their guns. They weren't liars. They drafted triple scaling lanes once again. 
and actually made it work once again against Eminem. I do think Eminem may, okay, could you call it an off game? Uh, they have been kind of playing a bit poorly, but like, I think Chimera specifically, I don't know what happened. I don't think there's a world you should die in the early like that. I feel like Eminem had all the tools to stall and now I feel like I own an explanation as to why I think the, the game should have gone better. In previous games, uh, Eminem as a team have, even though they've been behind, we even with like a with an early game team composition in the mid and late game, they have had these kind of dream fights. And I thought if they just made it to these dream fight scenarios, whilst even with a good scaling comp, it wouldn't be too bad. But clearly, I was completely wrong. It did not go very well. Didn't work well no. for Eminem, but tell me. I just want to say, from <laughs> a Bifrost point of view, Diamond Prox played that game so well. That was my main question. Right? We, we know he likes to gank early. Would he be able to do that on the now nerfed Wukong like he did previously in the split? And the answer, a resounding yes. He had a, an incredible game on the Wukong. They snowballed louder control, and as you talked about, right? If Odie hadn't died once, it would have been a completely perfect game. No turds, no plates, no drakes. They gave up so little that game. It was only that one kill on Odie that denied the possibility of that perfect game from the side of Bifrost, and to me, I am so impressed by Diamond Prox, how he managed to get so much out of the early game of a champion whose early game clear just got nerfed. We call them the hope from Spring Split, and now they're back on playoffs, and that's why we're going to talk with Fury, the mid laner. Welcome back. Ah, the beautiful smile. How are you doing, Fury? How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. It has been a long time, right? I think it's already it has been a long, that long I've time, not been on, uh, on the stream, so I'm back. I know things have been uh, complicated for your team, but finally you can step back and say, well, we are in playoffs, we're secured, we just need to look into other teams right now. What was the rush or at least the feeling coming from the early part of the split where you guys were looking good, all of a sudden you went downhill, that's the only way you can put it, but you're now back on track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we are not locked for playoffs yet, it depends if Naviki loses today One game or wins. Away, yeah, but yeah. this is so, the best position you If they have. lose, we are locked. If they don't, then we still have a fight against them. But I think looking at the split, how it kind of went, we had kind of good weeks the first weeks. Uh, I think last week and the week before was kind of already showing that we had some struggles. Uh, I mean, the game against Singularity was like a, a wake-up call, right? Like it was mm -hmm. embarrassing to lose against them. Like no offense to the players, but we should not lose against that team. Uh, so it was a really good wake up call and yeah, we have shown this week that yeah, we should uh, that we can beat any team and I think for uh, upcoming games we can just keep going like that. You you're telling me it was a wake up call, but what realistically changed on that wake up call? Um I mean we have mostly looked into our like first ten minutes with how we play. The most right. games that we lost was that we did some stuff early game that were like not good calls. So that kind of snowballed the game after that. So we have looked a lot into that and that has been improved and you can see it in the games that it's just going a lot better. Now, if you do end up on playoffs, you only need one game from Nuriki. It's up to you guys, nevertheless, you still have a few games to go. But if you do get locked in for playoffs, you're looking at the last seed. So you're one of the teams that will be allowed to be picked by other team. Who mm -hmm. or versus which team don't you want to get picked by? Um, to be honest, I don't really care who we face. I think if we can just always keep the going, same answer, beauty. <laughs> but uh, continue. I think if we can just keep going, are we are playing like this week? We can beat any team. I mean, we have beaten the first team on Monday, so I don't have like I'm not scared for any team. Okay, okay, last one because I need to I need I need to use this one. You you <laughs> defeated the, the, the GDXL, the first team on the standings. That was not a defeat. That was a complete domination from you versus the the enemy mid laner, one of the most <laughs> known mid laners in all ERLs. How were you feeling on that game? I didn't got to talk with you, so I, I need to know how were you feeling? <laughs> how big of a smile you had on your face? Well that game my energy level was like out of the roof like I was completely screaming I was <laughs> doing everything I could to win that game so uh, yeah I mean sadly I didn't have the interview on Monday but uh, that game was uh, really fun to play and I really enjoyed it it seemed like it it seemed like it well you're bringing the silence you're getting back on those melee champions let's see if one day you actually lock in what you hover every single game I'm looking <laughs> for you thank you so much for this one if you have a nice day and I'll see you in playoffs who knows I'll see you soon regardless thank you have a good night see ya
There you go. And, and I like to talk with him because he's so emotional and sometimes you can see when he's feeling the defeat. Mm -hmm. When he gets that W, he also feels that one. He's a 8080 uh, kind of player. He definitely does seem really happy in that interview, man. Like, I, I haven't been here for the interviews where he has been, like, on that loss streak. Mm -hmm. But definitely from this, he definitely looks like he's all motivated. And saying he's screaming during the game, I can definitely feel that. So Bafras are looking for playoffs. They seem really good right now. Eminem are looking for relegations. How can we look into this team? We keep talking about it's really sad, obviously, but we have to face the facts. They're picking some sort of champions. They're now working. What has to change for Eminem to keep their ground on Division 1? What to me was very interesting was the fact that you highlighted, Aragon, that they had gone for a bit of a different style here, right? They had picked the scaling, and then they fell even further behind than when they picked for the early game. And that to me is a very worrying sign. The fact that, you know, the early game, okay, you drafted an early game comp that didn't really work out, you didn't gain a lead, so, okay, let's just pick a late game comp, hope to go even, and then in the late game we can play the game. But no, you just get curb stomped and lose it 20 minutes or something like that. Very, very tough defeats here. Mm -hmm. For me, what's most important is, you know, they go back, they reassess. Do we still want to continue with this late game? Do we think that we can make it work? Because Bifrost, let's be honest, they have looked very good this week. So it is a strong team they were up against. You know, the teams in NLC Div 2 and the bottom of Div, of Div 1 aren't as strong. So maybe they stick with this scaling comp and then they try and gain some momentum in the last two games, which I think is the most important part. Picking up maybe just one more win here in NLC Div 1 before you go into relegations will give you that bit of extra confidence that you that can give them the boost, team. yeah, to help yes. them and face relegations. If they end up there, we're going to talk with Kemeto right now from the M&M side. Welcome back to the interview. I know this is a tough one after uh, missing this game. Tell me what happened, because it seems like the, ch the champion select went better for you guys. You had some sort of late game, you had the early game as well, but what do you believe failed in order for the Bifrost to take this sort of lead? I mean, quite frankly, they just played better individually overall. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really a secret anymore that we're really struggling. Right now, uh, we're struggling stylistically, individually, um, and just overall as a team. I think, you know, just even the, the close games we had against Bifrost last time or against X7 are kind of a thing of the past now. So I think the biggest issue against, like, as weird as this sounds, um, like with the last week of the split coming in is just against ourselves. I think we need to make sure that we have good morale coming into the last week and get some momentum going. and. Uh, kind of prepare for relegations, which sucks, but it's reality. You have been a player that, that joined in really recently. Obviously, Division 2, looking for your spot doesn't seem to be a good feeling right now. But tell me, what was the most important lesson you've learned so far while staying on Division 1 with Eminem? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think the biggest thing I've felt from Division 1, uh, the biggest thing I've taken away is I don't think you can be a one-man team, or I don't think you can... Well, it's very rare to just be the, the, the difference, maker, difference maker every game and, like, solo carry. I think the game has just become such a team-orientated and macro-based game that you have to be on the same page as a team. So not only do you have to be really highly skilled and talented to play in Division 1 in the first place, but if you're not on the same page as your team and if your team don't see things the same way you do or you don't understand a concept at the same level, you're not going to win and you're not going to snowball games, you're not going to have comebacks. I think that's really evident from the, the games that we've had uh, and the games where we've won. We've looked like we have been on the same page and we've snowballed really, really efficiently. But the games where we've lost um, have, uh, not every time, a lot of times, has just been individual mistakes, but has just been really poor macro-based decisions and not playing as a team. and. As it sucks that we're doing this bad in the league, but I've taken a lot away from this. This has been a really good experience so far. Um, overall, I think I've, I have learned a lot and I have grown as a person, so I'm grateful for that, but I now want to build from that and take that into the last week and especially relegations and hopefully for future splits. So. Let's yeah. see what the future holds for you guys. And remember that no matter what happens, it's your climbing, it's your uh, staircase so far. And you guys have the names and you guys have the skill. Maybe going into a game with that defeat mentality is pushing you guys backwards because the team is there. So best of luck to whatever future holds for you. Have a nice one. Always a pleasure. Cheers. Thanks very much, Cheers. guys. It is good to know what they took away from Division 1 and all that, but they now are aware maybe relegations is our place right now. Might as well face it and just come on top of it.
Yeah, I mean, Canada get the best of it, right? We saw with Singularity for a while, they have obviously been locked into relegations, and we've seen them with the new roster, the momentum, the fact that they're showing signs of life. I think they're looking very strong coming into relegations compared to what they did just a couple weeks ago. And I hope the same will happen here for Eminem coming in to this last week, because we know that roster is very good. We've seen good moments from Kalen. Mm -hmm. We know Soft can qualify to the European Masters. He did that down in the Italian scene. Camari is a great team player who's a very good facilitator. I like that butt lane as well. Michigu has had some great highlights moments with threat or so it's a team with the potential to really be good they just haven't really clicked so i just hope they bounce back in this, that last week build some momentum and you know maybe st they stick around for diff one next year let's see what happens moving forward as we look into the standings i just got a surprise out of nowhere i was so confused <laughs> let's look into this one eminem now looking into relegations they have to win two games and vanier has to lose two games but i I think uh, Vanir have the upper hand on the head-to-head, -head, so no matter what happens, I believe Eminem are now currently looking into relegations. But as I said in the previous, uh, before the show, I have no idea how to look into a foldy sheet, so I'm completely lost. For Bifrost, they're 9-7. and seven. This means they're almost locked in playoffs, and Nuriki have to win if they want to move forward. And now moving forward, Aragon. We need to look into JDXL Singularity. New changes in the mid lane. There's a lot to talk about it. So that's why I'm going to ask you. So let's look.